In the beginning was math, and math was with everything, and math was everything. When I say math, you probably think of calculation, the endless adding, subtracting, multiplying, and, and long dividing we all suffered through in boring classes. But math is not calculation. The truth is that you are math, that every moment, every feeling, and every thought you've ever experienced has been math experiencing itself. I'm going to endeavor to explain that to you, and when I'm done, I hope the statement I opened with makes more sense to you. Let's begin by understanding what a mathematical structure is. A mathematical structure is simply a set of objects and possible types of interaction between them. One such structure could be the set of integers 1, 2, and 3, and the interactions between them of addition and subtraction, like 1 plus 2 equals 3 and 3 minus 1 equals 2. This mathematical structure is its members and their interactions, and can be understood to contain all the possible situations of those members interacting with each other within the confines of the definition of the structure. Let's look at a class of mathematical structures called fractals. Fractals are a type of structure that can be zoomed into to infinite depths. Most fractals contain endless self-repeating forms, with infinitely many tiny variations on the greater overall form repeating at every scale as you fall deeper and deeper into the fractal. There are hundreds of examples of fractal zooms to be found all over the internet, including many that zoom into a fractal called the Mandelbrot set, so deeply that you could imagine zooming in on the entire observable universe until you're down to the smallest unit of space, the Planck length. And if you continued zooming trillions and trillions and trillions of times deeper beyond that smallest possible quantum length, you'd only just have begun your journey to the infinite depths of this mathematical structure. Now let's talk about strange loops. A loop is formed when an element in a structure is self-reflexive. A real-world example of this would be a camera filming a monitor, which is displaying the live video feed from that camera. It's showing what it's seeing and seeing what it's showing, and when that happens, things start to get a little strange. Infinities seem to erupt from nowhere as feedback loops create chaos and distortion. Gödel discovered mathematical structures that have this strange quirk of self-reflexivity. Numbers which seem to observe themselves, complete with feedback loops and chaotic infinities. Let's take this one step further and imagine our camera has an internal set of rules that defines certain types of images as beautiful and others as painfully ugly. Let's imagine this camera is mounted on a motorized tripod so it has some control over what it's seeing. The camera would move towards images it considers beautiful and flee the ones it sees as ugly. This sort of system could be described using mathematical structures, and specifically we would call it a self-aware substructure. Self-aware because this structure has some control over its own circumstance, and sub because it exists within a larger structure that it also observes. The great breakthrough of Isaac Newton was noticing how the world around him was so accurately described by math equations that it seemed as if the equations were laws that nature had to follow. Flash forward a few hundred years and now we have physicists and cosmologists who devote their lives toward improving and understanding these observations. But about a hundred years ago, things started to get really strange in the world of physics. I won't go into detail here because the answers haven't really been agreed upon just yet, but the general conclusion of most physicists is that we must live in some kind of multiverse. And what is a multiverse? Well, let's talk about four different levels of multiverse we could live in. The first sort is an infinite space. Imagine the universe expands boundlessly in all dimensions of space. In this sort of universe, there is far more matter than there are ways that matter can be arranged. If that's the case, patterns must repeat themselves. And so if you traveled far enough in any direction, you would eventually come to an arrangement of matter which was in every way identical to the one you left. And of course, there would be many, many more arrangements of matter that were only very slightly different. Maybe one of the hairs on your head is gray in the world you've left, but brown in the one in which you've arrived. A level two multiverse is infinitely many universes all existing in the same space 
but where the laws of physics behave slightly differently in each, such that all possible cosmological constants are tried out in this continuous space. This explains why we live in such a finely tuned universe, because all tunings are tried out, and only the ones which can support conscious observers have conscious observers. And in those infinite spaces, all the conclusions we made about level one multiverses will apply, and there will be many versions of each possible observer scattered throughout every direction of space. At level three, the first two levels exist, but in this level, across all possible universes, in all possible configurations of universe, all possible outcomes of seemingly random events exist superimposed over one another. Each time you flip a coin in a level three multiverse, you cause two new universes to form one where the coin lands on heads, one where it lands on tails. If you're like me, thinking about this is probably making you feel really, really small, but also infinitely huge and spread out in every direction and possible state of existence. Pretty cool. In the fourth level, every mathematical structure is its own universe. Some of these structures contain self-aware substructures like you and me. Infinitely varied fractal structures like the Mandelbrot set contain infinitely complex wonders to be explored from the outside, but they also can contain conscious self-aware substructures exploring the structures from the inside. These mathematical substructures no doubt create beautiful hallucinations of what their own realities look like. And if they discover math, they probably start to wonder why certain mathematical structures explain with remarkable precision the interactions they see in the world around them. That precision stems from a simple truth. The stuff of their universe, the substrate upon which they exist and from which they are made, is literally math. And now that you know all of that, I hope it makes a little bit more sense when I say to you, in the beginning there was math, and math was with everything, and math was everything. From one self-aware substructure to another, cheers. These ideas have their roots at least as far back as Plato, and are more fully and accurately explored by the cosmologist Max Tegmark and the philosopher Douglas Hofstetter. Check them out to go deeper into this rabbit hole.